The Fear Inside tells the story of a father who is desperately worried because of the mysterious loss of his sons. He searches from them all over the place and he cannot work out the mystery and then in searching them for them he actually finds the fear inside himself and is accosted by this monster who leads him in three different directions and it's very very clever and it was made in 2009 and now the final cut which has got all the little bits added in and every now and again you get a, a little snippet of the object in the corner of a scene just to make it there but slightly unawares that it's there and you've got the wonderful music from Andrew Fight, which finishes it all off. Are those two going to be alright getting home? Yeah, of course they are. They're big enough boys that can look after themselves. After all, it's the worst that can happen. Come on, Jack. I really like that beer, you know. It's alright. What I find interesting about revisiting the fear inside is at the point of its creation it was the earliest point in the timeline for this little at the time object verse which was only going to be four films it was going to be the object uh, the fear inside listener and the object 2.0 which ended up becoming the object legacy um, and then it obviously it was around about the time we wrapped it that we'd started connecting the films because they weren't going to be connected at all and then I had this epiphany where I'd written this spec script for the warriors years and years ago and then I was like well I some of these characters are named the same things and then I was like wow okay maybe these short films are like an origin story to these characters and that's where that inspiration came from from building this universe and that's why for me it's interesting going back and making this final cut of the fear inside because now we've released the businessman which is the big kind of almost the mythos film where you introduce the warriors order and characters like Seth that come through that world and it's set around about the same time as the fear inside and now re-releasing the fear inside we get to see the parallels of how those two the feature film and the short film coincide and I found that really interesting especially now we've got original music with it it works so much better now I think in hindsight working with the businessman after the final release of a fear inside and um, with the beautiful music from Andrew fight and including scenes from the epilogue and uh, the businessman I feel that we've now got the best experience we can to make it a really good short movie. Briefly, the story of the fear inside originally was a father who is worried because out of the blue his two sons go missing and the entire movie is his search for his sons and what might have happened to them. There aren't many characters in it. There are the, the two brothers, the mother, father 
and the policeman. And I think they were the only characters in Fear Inside, apart from the monster himself. But we'll come to that another time. But it's fascinating to see that the film we recorded in 2009 has been redone and has so much more meaning. And now the final cut with the wonderful music from Andrew Fight has given us yet another story. Well, I got the idea of doing the final cut really because when we did the Fear Inside, I uh, used copyrighted music uh, because obviously this is back in the day when YouTube didn't really care what music was in it and then they started bringing in all the copyright rules and you had to use original music and stuff. So I made two cuts of the film because the original version was muted and then I released a version of the film that was just basically the uh, work print that has no music in. And then I had several uh, musicians reach out to me, uh, one of which being Andrew Fight, who ended up scoring this fantastic score, which until now was not fully utilised until this final cut of The Fear Inside. We used bits and pieces of it for some other short films like Epilogue and Frost and the uh, twinkle sound of the introduction of Fear Inside became essentially the object theme. That's why it was so interesting to go back, have this film and have the whole score go through to add it in. When we filmed Fear Inside, which is the second one we did, after the object, it was totally unrelated. But when we saw the similarities in the characters and the theme going through, as a coincidence, I suggested at the end of Fear Inside that we have three alternate endings, just to throw up in the air there to have something different. But because the object and the businessman deal in alternate realities and time changing, then this made it possible for all three of those endings to be not alternate endings anymore, but alternate realities which means they all made sense and they all led on to a different path leading back to the same in the end. I believe it was first written as a school project, as a story for school and I was very impressed with the idea of it and I loved the object when I saw it. I thought it was an, a really extremely good idea, the way it had been filmed and the way there wasn't a lot of dialogue and way, the way it was a very visual short film and al along the lines of the same thing we had a lot of visuals in the fear inside although there was a lot more dialogue it became easier to match the characters up especially as a lot of the actors were the same in, in both things uh, what was also great is about a year and a half after we made the fear inside we made like a a real kind of snippet follow-up film called Epilogue and at the time when I released it and I was slowly staggering on to trying to figure out how to cast Listener I was I was kind of making films to kind of fill the gap and that's where Epilogue came in and now looking back at it I don't really like it being in its own little thing it makes more sense to be part of the fear inside so that was one of the advantages of going back and doing this final cut is I could essentially add that epilogue back in even though it was filmed a year and a half later and now it feels like a much more completed story. Whereas you felt like uh, The Fear Inside was an introduction to Mr Myers with comparing it with a businessman and with hindsight now you get to go back and you seek a totally different Mr. Myers to what you had originally imagined, which I think is pretty good because you're watching the same thing, but you're taking enjoyment from it in a totally different way. I love how, and this goes back to obviously the original interactive film, that 
these characters who didn't really have names to start off with now have got so much more built in backstory that uh, you could well obviously now you've seen some of the characters backstories and you've seen some of their other stories that they've been in taking this film out out from that context you're like oh my god what's going to happen to these characters especially if you've gone in watching the businessman first and then gone back to watch the fury inside you're like oh my god is this really what happened to jonathan and andrew oh my god what's happened to mr myers so it was really interesting now looking at looking at it through that lens and it almost feels like a different film in some ways even though it is the still the same film that we filmed in 2009 from when I first played Mr Myers in the fear inside from the programs afterwards like the businessman and the object I feel like my character development is such that I've come the full circle back to Mr Myers in the final cut I'm finding fascinating that in The Fear Inside, uh, Mr. Myers was just a character. Um, a lot of the characters didn't even have names. Uh, but now, when it integrates into the larger universe, you can look back and see their backstories and how they were who they are. And whilst in The Fear Inside, um, Mr. Myers was just a worried father, you see that he's a lot more than that. He was in a, a, a special team of operatives that look for mysterious happenings and his entire future and past are wound up in the entire universe, which is quite fascinating. I personally say out of the short films, I think Fear Inside's probably one of my favourites because while taking them all into context, while The Shape of Things to Come probably looks the best and is acted out the best, those scenes were originally shot for Object Legacy and um, the cancelled Gathering film. So it was kind of a mishmash of a film that ended up becoming its own short film, whereas The Fear Inside was built as a short film, was originally written as a short story. So when it now looking back at all of them, I'd say, especially the first two, The Object and Fear Inside, are probably two of the standouts for me, and I'm really glad about the way they turned out. One of my favourite scenes in the film is um, when I'm saying goodbye to my sons and they're going out for the evening, Andrea's just got his first job and he asked him to keep an eye on his brother because they, his brother's a bit of a reckless drunk and uh, you feel the pride in your son that he's got his first job and you can see the nudge nudge wink wink keep an eye on your brother and don't forget to say to you goodbye to your mother before you go I think that is one of my favourite scenes in the whole movie Comparing the final cut now with the fear inside you can see the difference because you've got more investment in these characters because you know them so well from other things that now when you go back and watch it you can root for them because you know their characters so well it's wonderful that you see in if you're comparing the fear inside and the businessman which are more or less happening at the same time uh, there was quite a big gap but you could still see and compare the characters whereas now with these new short movies we've put it's filled the gap and, and made it a smoother transition and you can follow the characters and you can really root for the people in the fear inside that you didn't really know before when it first came out i think the fear inside is one of my favorite movies of this universe and it's not because it stars me what i hope for really is that you get to watch the businessman 
and you get invested in these characters and with that in investment you go out and explore some of the other short films that are set in this uh, little cinematic universe we created and I hope that one of the first things you jump into is The Fear Inside, the final cut. So I hope you enjoy our new little ultimate cut of this short film and you never know the story isn't over yet and maybe still something that hasn't happened that night that you may see in the future maybe in a certain final report After experiencing the final cut of the fear inside, I feel like this is the total experience and I hope you enjoyed it too and I hope you're going to enjoy the further adventures of Mr. Myers. <laughs>